Over the past two weeks, we've followed the progress of our beloved meteorologist, Gary Dan, after he sustained a brutal attack from a transient during a live broadcast. Sadly, his condition only seems to worsen as the days go on. In order to examine this condition, now referred to as the transient flu, we've compiled this clip showing the effect it's had on our Gary. Looking at <coughs> That should be fine. Thank you, Gary. <coughs> I wasn't finished, Diane. <coughs> it's okay, Gary. We can... I'm not a cripple, Diane. mother and tall. Oh, whoops! Cat's out of the bag! Well, you're not fooling anyone there, Cheech! Yeah, Mexican, Mexican hat dance all around your head! Come over here! Come over here! You think it's makeup? Get off. In response to comments that Gary made about me, I would just like to say that I'm very proud of my Latino heritage. Although my grandparents are actually from El Salvador, not Mexico. To find out more about Gary's condition, along with the dangers of the transient flu, we go to Miami Valley Hospital, where we'll be joined by Dr. Ken Jenkins. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, Diane. What can you tell us about Gary? Definitely an unusual case. Um, after paramedics resuscitated him in the studio last week, he went into a complete rage and had to be restrained both physically and chemically. When you say chemically restrained, what do you mean, doctor? We had to use the antipsychotic drug Haldol. Um, unfortunately, the more we use this, the less effective it becomes. We've just been loading him up on morphine just to get him into the CAT scan. Do you have any insight as to what this transient flu actually is? Well, it's really a head scratcher. The flu presents a type of vascular dementia, which is something you usually see with later stage Alzheimer's patients. Uh, however, in this case, we're seeing an exponential amount of lesions on the brain. Uh, these outbursts are fairly counterintuitive to what we're finding in Gary's body. How do you mean? Well, the, I mean, the guy's throwing blood clots like crazy. That's what's causing the necrosis all over his body. What exactly is necrosis? Well, it's just like it sounds. His cells are dying. Uh, his body is dying from the inside out with the amount of damage we're seeing. I have no idea how he's still alive, let alone putting up such a fight. Is Gary aware of what's going on? Is he responsive? Uh, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. What? Is Gary aware of what's going on? Is he responsive? I hope not. Uh, I mean, he's, yeah, he's responsive. He responds very well to painful stimuli. Uh, he's definitely aware of people in the room but as far as having any sort of cognitive abilities, uh, he's basically just a very active vegetable. That's so horrible. Do you think that there's anything that you can learn from him to find a cure or a vaccination? I hope so. I certainly hope so because it's actually very exciting. No one's ever seen such an aggressively degenerative virus before. Far and away, the most interesting aspect is that despite the catastrophic damage that he has suffered, he just won't die. Which is great because it gives us more time to study and learn more about the virus. Uh, we're under extreme quarantine here in the hospital basement, so I'll be here. I'll be poking around and uh, I'll find something. I'll let you know. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. I hope we can catch up with you later in the week to find out the latest. So far, so good. We'll be right back after these messages.